This is R2D Tech and today it's all about the new Mavic Air 2, so stay tuned. So DJI just released this drone, which is of course the successor to the Mavic Air. Now in terms of design, these two are miles apart. It's pretty obvious straight away that the new one is slightly larger in all dimensions. And I emphasize the word slightly because this drone is still very compact. And when you fold up the two drones, they're almost the same size with the exception of the Mavic Air 2 being slightly thicker. In terms of design language, they seem to have gone for more of a Mavic 2 approach. It looks very very similar to the Mavic 2 or Mavic 2 Zoom. Everything from the color to the shape and even the camera unit. The camera unit looks very similar to that of the DJI Osmo Pocket. Let's start by going through some of those camera specs though because they are seriously impressive. You are now getting full 4K 60 frames per second video. And to top that off, you can do slow-mo up to 240 frames per second HD video. That's gonna be absolutely amazing for capturing those really cinematic shots. And of course, you'll be able to capture great video paired with those really cool intelligent flight modes. You've still got features like tripod mode and all of the smart features we come to expect. Another example would be the follow me feature, which is really good if you like to do extreme sports for example but we'll go into this in more detail in just a sec now sticking to the camera also with photos you can either shoot 12 megapixels or 48 megapixel photos now this is a very large camera sensor and shooting 48 megapixel photos they're going to be very detailed and very sharp that's absolutely amazing for a drone of this size and you'll be able to get some really cool shots it's very important to mention that paired with that amazing resolution you also have a free axis gimbal so that will make the shots very stable and you won't get any blur. Before we move on, I'm guessing you're all wondering how much you have to drop to actually buy this drone. Surprisingly, it's not actually that crazy. It costs around £750, which in dollars is around £799. This might seem quite high, but compared to their other products like the Mavic 2, I think it's a great deal and you're basically getting all the features you get on some other more professional drones and in some cases even more. One example of this is actually with the battery life. You can get up to 34 minutes of flight time which when you compare that to I think the 21 minutes that you got on the original Mavic Air, that's actually a huge upgrade and for the price I think it's absolutely excellent. Of course if you do opt for the fly more combo which I think is around a thousand pounds or $999 then you are going to be getting those extra batteries which might be quite useful if you're out on the go and you can't charge the batteries anywhere. In terms of weight, it's around 570 grams, which unfortunately does mean that you need to follow all the regulations in your area. Now, DJI have made this significantly easier now with an update to their app, which helps you with this. So if you live in the US, you actually are gonna get this full feature because they worked with the FAA. What that entails is actually a view on the app which will tell you all the restricted zones in your area and how restricted they are. And in addition to this, if you are in the US, I think exclusively, then it will tell you when there are manned aircraft nearby or passing overhead. And that gives you ample warning to bring your drone down if that's the case. Also, if you are in a no-fly zone, the app will actually not let you take off, which I know is slightly annoying, but you shouldn't really be flying in no-fly zones anyway, so it's kind of just following the law. Personally, I think it's a good idea because whenever I've flown my drone in the past, I've always been worried about whether or not I am flying in a no-fly zone. And I've always had to look for third-party maps on the internet which could tell me this. But having it all in the actual app is very useful. Now, one of the most important things when you're flying a drone is actually the range. And unlike the original Mavic Air where you had to use the Wi-Fi connection, which was slightly dodgy and didn't work all the time, now you are getting OcuSync 2.0. What that means is you'll have a much more stable connection to your drone, and this will allow you to fly up to 10 kilometers away, which is absolutely insane. Considering you're not meant to fly out of the line of sight, I think you'll never really reach that 10 kilometers, but it's always really nice to have. 
The remote controller is also completely redesigned this year. It is quite a lot chunkier, but with good reason. Obviously you've got that improved transmission distance, but also the actual mount for the phone is above this time and not below. And the way they've done it is really cool. It's kind of what you would have expected from the beginning and it's a lot easier to use. Also, it makes it easier to mount larger smartphones, which previously was a bit of a hassle. And it's also now easier to do so with your case still on your phone. In addition, you don't need to worry about extending the antennae anymore because they're actually built into the phone mount. The cable to connect your phone to the remote controller is also hidden away, and DJI do provide all the types of cable you might want. So by default, there's a lightning cable plugged in, but they also provide you with USB-C in the box, which is very nice. Just a quick extra feature, since the remote is quite large now, it actually has quite a large battery and it can charge your phone as well while you're using it. There is no display on the actual remote control, but do you really need that when you have the phone there anyway? And I will say that the ergonomics this year are really good and definitely have been improved from last year. Now moving back onto that OcuSync 2.0, not only does that help improve the transmission distance and connection, Connection, but it also allows you to transmit 1080p 30fps footage directly back to your phone so you have a very high resolution live view as well which is always very important in addition you do get 8 gigabytes of internal storage on the drone and of course you can put your own SD card in to extend this now I did say I'd follow up on the follow me mode no pun intended you can't be serious man you cannot be serious and that basically relies heavily on the new vision system the drone has sensors on the front, the back, and the bottom this time round, and this really helps with those intelligent flight modes. So now you can do follow me mode with a lot more obstacles and complication. In the past, it would kind of just stop if it saw any sort of obstacle, but now with all of the new and improved software and sensors, it can actually try and follow you through more complicated scenarios, like if there's a tree, for example. In addition, there is that LED landing light if it's dark, which is always very useful and just puts your mind at ease. I think especially if you're a beginner with drones, it is very important to have all of these safety features and it just makes flying a lot less stressful. And of course, with all of those sensors, relying on the return to home is a lot less stressful as well because you know that the drone will avoid any obstacles. Whereas with some of their other drones like the Mavic Mini, which has way less sensors, I wouldn't be so confident clicking that return to home button. So taking all of these features into account, I think they've basically delivered a Mavic 2 quality drone, but in not only a smaller form factor, but also at a much cheaper price. Yes, you are gonna get slightly better quality with the Mavic 2, for example, but to be honest, for most people, it's not even gonna be noticeable. It is worth noting that with a drone like the Mavic 2, you do get a more sophisticated app which for professional videographers or photographers might be quite important. So you are lacking some customizing features with this Mavic Air 2. But for the most part and for most people using these drones, especially if you're not a professional, the auto features will be just fine and you can always edit these in software later on anyway. I think it's a great product and I think it's priced pretty reasonably as well. I'd be tempted to go for the fly more combo just to have those extra batteries, but I would definitely recommend this this drone to anyone who wants to get into the drone world or any photographer or videographer. It's a great size, it's really portable, it's easy to transport, it has all the features you want, it's got a great camera, it's got a great gimbal. I mean, what's not to like about this drone? So that's it from us this week. If you liked the video, then hit the thumbs up button and if you loved it, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell below.